The title for this hearing that's coming up, Holding Mega Banks Accountable 10 Years Later, um, what do you think about that? Is that something that you would be in favor of if you were sitting on the committee? Well, I'm not sure what the exact focus is. Um, my own sense is that we should be looking at how things have been working since then. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have made great progress in, uh, in holding them accountable and, uh, in fact, changing the, uh, some of the practices that had caused us a, uh, a problem. So uh, I, I would not myself be focusing to a great extent on the errors that they had made. I would like to look at how things are going. I think the general sense is that uh, the regulatory framework we established has been a, uh, a pretty stable one and a pretty solid one. Um, you know, the, uh, I know there are people on the right who think we have overregulated, but they also tell us that we now have the best economy we've ever had. And if, in fact, we had somehow damaged the uh, critical financial mechanism of, of the financial services industry, you wouldn't have a, uh, a, a, such a good economy. Uh, you, you couldn't do one without the other. So uh, we did make an adjustment uh, to help some of the smaller banks. But I, I would be focusing on uh, how things have functioned. And I think the, uh, the, the verdict is that they've been functioning pretty well. You know, it, it, it does seem that potentially if the right thinks it's been overregulated, the left, just based on the headline of this hearing, thinks it's been underregulated. Would you agree with that? Would I agree that that's what people think? Yeah. Would you agree that that's what the, the, the Democrats maybe think, the left wing of the Democrats maybe think at this point? Well, the left wing does. I don't think that's most Democrats. Um, I think there has been a, uh, an overestimate uh, of the, uh, of, of the uh, left as, as you do it. I think most Democrats on the committee believe that the, uh, that the balance has been struck uh, correctly. Now. That doesn't mean you wouldn't find individual instances where there were abuse. And what you have, I think, and maybe this is what people might have in mind, there was a general feeling in the public that uh, the banks that did do things that were wrong in the financial industry as well, uh, there was not sufficient law enforcement action, hmm. that there was not sufficient legal Punishment. sanction. Right. And, and that is separate from whether or not the regulatory framework is an accurate one. Jeb, let, let's talk a little bit about what these CEOs are going to be facing when they, when they go uh, before the committee on this. Um, Tim Sloan just stepping down, and obviously that came after lots of pressure um, from Maxine Waters, from other politicians, and from regulators. What, what does that mean for the CEOs now? Well, I think what they have to oh, realize, I what they have to realize is, number one, there's a very low probability that any serious legislation is going to get through in this Congress, and I haven't seen any indication and it's going to come out of the House Financial Services Committee. So in some respects, uh, Chairman Maxine Waters has already said this is something along the lines of she wants banks to use their record profits for certain underserved communities, which has everything to do with politicizing uh, the allocation of credit. So I think you're going to see a lot of political theater, and in some respects, you know, the question is, what are these CEOs going to do? Are they fearful of what's going to happen to their reputations? Are they fearful what's going to happen to their stock prices? I mean, clearly there is a scalp in Tim Sloan. Should they have had that scalp? I don't know. Um, you know, it's taken a long time to clean up a very bad mess at Wells Fargo. But it's also very problematic to have members of Congress being cho choosing, uh, you know, CEOs of banks. And when we talk about or whether Maxine Waters talks about you know, record profits for underserved communities, we have to remember that half of these, uh, these banks, these publicly traded banks, public companies in America, you know, that's 401k money, that's IRA money, that's pension fund money, uh, that's 501c3 money. So maybe Democrats on the committee think they're going after Jamie Dimon's bonus, but what they're really doing is going after the retirement plans uh, of many hardworking people in Mesquite, Texas that I used to represent uh, in the 5th Congressional District. So when all is said and done, I think there's going to be a whole lot more said than done in this particular hearing. Barney, what do you think? Uh, did Tim Sloan, well, should he have gotten for, chased out? Well, first of all, I'm feeling a little nostalgic. I haven't heard about the poor, hardworking people of Mesquite, Texas, since Jeb and I served together. 
<laughs> and uh, it's nice to be reminded, Jeb. Well, yeah, we'll, of, we'll of do this the, more often, me, Barney. Yeah, Jeb, um, I, first of all, there's a great exaggeration. I agree, no legislation is going to come. The main reason is that none is called for. There was, when we passed the bill, as it worked out in practice, as will happen, I think there was more of a burden on smaller banks than we had anticipated. They, we never thought the smallest banks were going to have a problem with the Volcker Rule because they didn't engage in the activity the Volcker Rule prohibited. But they told us they were being told by their lawyers to spend a lot of time and energy proving that they weren't doing it. Uh, Congress exempted them from it. I didn't like everything in that bill, but I thought that was a good piece. So uh, I, there is no sector of the financial services community clamoring or arguing for any major change. There are some regulatory differences. As to Wells Fargo, yes, I think it was important that he, uh, that he stepped down. Right. He had clearly been unable as a CEO to break a pattern of abuse of consumers. Remember that Wells Fargo was found to have abused consumers in several ways, in dishonest ways, uh, with, with fake accounts, with charging people money that shouldn't have been right. charged. And yeah, I do think that there needs to be some responsibility. Uh, I agree with Jeb that nobody should be, the members of Congress shouldn't be picking CEOs, and they're not. Well, Nobody's trying me, to pick Barney, his successor. Let me, let me ask you about that, that issue, about them picking CEOs or not, and I'd also love to hear what Jeb has to say. Warren Buffett quoted over the weekend in the Financial Times saying that whoever is chosen next to become Tim Sloan's successor maybe shouldn't come from Wall Street. And he said that not, I don't think, necessarily as an investor per se, but much more about the way the winds are blowing in Washington in terms of serving uh, or placating Washington, would you prefer somebody who comes from outside of the world of Wall Street? I mean, there's a real issue here about whether you want someone with experience who's worked in the world of banking and maybe somebody who's worked in corporate America but hasn't, but may somehow therefore may be more uh, palatable to Washington? Well, I don't think ex-members of Congress should pick CEOs any more than current members. Um, and I think that, in fact, when it comes down to it, it depends on the individual. So, uh, but I would say I, 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 the, the importance of a new CEO is not so much to placate Congress. By the way, as somebody just alluded, the control of the currency, the Donald Trump appointed control of the currency was harshly critical of, of, of uh, Wells Fargo, was critical of Tim Sloan after he testified. So it isn't just uh, Democratic members of Congress. There is a general understandable concern and it does have to do clearly with the culture it wasn't one single thing there there was clearly pressure on the employees of wells fargo i assume most of them were very decent honorable people but they were clearly under pressure from the bank structure to do things they shouldn't have been doing to generate profit so yeah you do need somebody i would think somebody from outside the bank but not necessarily outside wall street who was ready to uh, to change that i haven't got uh, a uh, particular candidate, I, I was actually just thinking about, well, if I did have to say, and I didn't think anybody was going to pay any attention to me, I think maybe Sheila Bear ought to be considered. Uh, a Trump, uh, a George W. Bush appointee, who was a very tough, very fair regulator, who served on the board of Santander, who knows banking and knows regulation, and uh, would clearly send the message that uh, uh, the, the, the abuses have to stop. 